And welcome to Hot News. We are live on Pan African Television. We are also live on Facebook at Pan African Television and also on YouTube at Pan African Television. Follow us on all our social media platforms. Leave your comments to make a time and read all those up for you. My name is Justice Apia. Tonight on Hot News, we are looking at a very serious issue. Dr. Mahmoud Dubamia, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana has slammed former President John Dramani Mahama over comments made uh, on the state of the economy currently. Well, what Dr. Baumia has said has to do with the fact that, look, the times in which we are we're not supposed to be doing politics, but if the former president brought it up, then, of course, uh, he responded. And he asked the former president to uh, make sure that he check his data well before he make public comments or, uh, you know, he comes out with, you know, some figures when it comes to the dealings with the economy under President Adam Kufuado and his watch. And this is what Dr. Baumia said. The, he said that former President John Dramani Mahama uh, must speak to incontrovertible data in his public utterances to avoid embarrassing his, himself. Dr. Baumia, has, however, laughed off the former president's claim and has advised him to look at data on his own record in government as well as data on the economic management and performance of the Akufuado government before he speaks. Well, let's go and listen to uh, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baramia. When we come back, uh, I introduce my guest. <laughs> was in government for eight years. They may think that we have short memories, but we can still remember very clearly that after eight years that they had in office, in government, to demonstrate their prowess in managing this country and managing the, the economy. After eight years, what did they leave us with? They left us with declining agriculture, declining industry, Interest rates were high, inflation was high. In fact, if you look at the data in terms of macroeconomic performance in any economy, since the year 2000, the tenure of the former president was the worst in, in, in terms of outcomes in macroeconomic performance. That's the data, it's not me saying it. The banking system was weak. Unemployment was rising. Our national health insurance was back to cash and carry. We had four years of doom so with its devastating impact on our economy. And not even withstanding that, electricity prices were being increased by an average of 45% between 2010 and 2015. Our public finances were in a precarious state, of course, that resulted in us having to go to the IMF for a bailout and policy credibility. Practices were being increased. There was a freeze on public sector recruitment, cuts in allowances for teachers, and lecturers, cuts in allowances for lecturers, abolition of teacher training allowances, abolition of nursing training allowances, and even for teachers who had worked for two, three years, they were being paid just three months. If you want to test the robustness of an economy, you test it in a time of crisis. Thankfully, we have had two crises. Under the NDC, there was an internally generated crisis, which was doomed so. Under uh, the presidency of Nana Akufuado, there has been an externally generated crisis, which has been the a global uh, coronavirus pandemic. I just want you to ask yourselves, how have these two crises been managed? The Dumso crisis, which crippled this economy for four years. What were the mitigating measures offered to businesses and individuals during Dumso? This was an internally generated crisis. We saw that even during Dumso, Electricity prices were being increased. Fuel prices were being increased. Teacher training allowances were being canceled. Nursing training allowances were being, all of that was happening 
during that particular crisis. You look at the coronavirus crisis and you look at the difference in terms of what has happened. The president has reduced electricity prices, made it free for lifeline consumers, has given free water for all Ghanaians for three months, has made sure that there is a stimulus package of 600 million Ghana cities for businesses. And we have seen domestic production of you know, PPEs, personal protective equipment for our health workers locally. So the, the, the difference couldn't be more stark between the leadership under a crisis under the um, doom so and that under the coronavirus epidemic. Welcome back. That was Dr. Mahamud Dubaramia, Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. Of course, he has been speaking uh, to some, you know, issues raised by the former president, John Dramani Mahama. Now, former president, uh, sorry, the vice president sort of, you know, tried to do some comparisons with regards to the Dumso era by uh, under the Eswal administration and uh, the COVID-19 pandemic happening under this administration. He disagreed vehemently with the former president. Now, he raised other issues. And what are those issues? He talked about the fact that unless anybody has a data otherwise to prove that any government had performed better than, uh, you know, their government when it comes to infrastructure, the person should bring it on for, I mean, a debate. But as it stands now, no government in its first term had performed better in infrastructure than their government. Well, let's go and listen to that particular one. We'll come back and I introduce my guest. that the data, the data shows that in the history of the Fourth Republic, there is no government that has provided as much infrastructure in its first term in office as the government of Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. Uh, we have the data. The data is there. If anybody wants to challenge that particular fact, there is no government in the history of our fourth republic. And I say this without any fear of contradiction because we have looked at the data and we have the data. There is no government in the history of the fourth republic, the first term government in the history of the fourth republic that has provided as much infrastructure across all the sectors, whether you're talking about roads, you're talking about water, you're talking about t toilets, you're talking about education, you're talking about health, there is no government in its first term in the Fourth Republic that has provided as much infrastructure as the government of Nana Adudankwa Kufuado. We will, we will be having that discussion, but I just want to put that on, on record. We have been able to do all these because we have built a strong economy and we are managing it in a way that allows us to continue to do all these even in the midst of a global pandemic. Welcome back. You've heard it from the Vice President, Dr. Mahamudu Bamiya. Tonight on Hot News, I've been joined in the studio by Mr. George A.C. He is the Director of Communications for NADMO and also a member of the New Patriotic Party Communications team. And also in the studio is Alhaji Halidu Haruna, a member of the National Democratic Congress uh, Communications team. Boss, uh, should I say bosses? You're welcome. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Um, <laughs> let me start with you, um, Al Hajj. Mm. What, what, what's your take on the vice president's outburst? Of course, his response to the former president, John Dramani Mahama. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Justice. And let me say good evening to my brother. Long time. Uh, I'm sure he's very hot <laughs> in this COVID. <laughs> 19 situations, and uh, I wish him well. Uh, Justice, I was surprised mm. to hear the vice president yesterday okay. making comparison of uh, COVID-19 mm. pandemic with 
the Dumso as crisis mm. uh, his own ways okay and challenge the previous government to come out based on data if indeed we have superior uh, performance in any in, in all the department of our economy uh to be honest with you i was a bit shocked okay that the vice president occupying the high office of this uh, the second high position of this country would do such kind of a comparison. I was thinking that he would have at least looked at Ebola, which is also equally a pandemic, uh, epidemic uh, as it occurred during the John Drahman Imama administration, where John Drahman Imama was able to manage it, it, that the people of this country were not traumatized. Mm. We did not. We were fortunate enough not to record a single case, even though countries around our 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 sub region mm. were devastated by the uh, 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 effect of Ebola. Now the vice president would want us to argue by using the Dumso vis-a-vis -vis pandemic. Mm. In my humble opinion, I, t I see that as insensitive, reckless, mm. and the least somebody who does not even appreciate. What is it that? Wh wh why do you see it as insensitive, reckless, and all those? You do not because you do not. we are talking about management of the economy in crisis. Of course, during Dom Sowi, it was a cry. Of course, it was under some sort of crisis that we are talking about. Today, we are having a pandemic, which could also serve as a crisis. And so, the, the, he was the, doing the comparison between the two governments the pandemic, in which they mistake, found themselves in crisis. A mistake. Mm in the pandemic will result in the loss of life. Mm. And you are making a comparison with uh, a situation that probably, if it becomes worse, will result, to, will result in probably collapse of businesses or mm. ineffectiveness of businesses, etc. Okay. To go back to the quotation of His Excellency, the President, mm. he indicated earlier in his address that they do not know how to bring back the dead, Very well. but they know how to bring back the economy. Mm. Now, doing so was not a creation of His Excellency John Drahmani Mama, and I think that it's important that we should read and read wide. Mm. If the Vice President had accused the NDC people that we do not read, mm. and he is the one making such kind of claim, and certainly uh, it presupposes that he's the one who is not reading. Let me refer you back to the Energy Commission website. And when you go there, you see the data regarding the uh, extent of uh, 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 generation capacity that we have as of 2013, when John Dehamani Mahama assumed the office of presidency. And from that onwards, indeed, it is clear in that website that we are not having the full capacity as required to supply to the people. So we are running a deficit. Mm in terms of the generation capacity. Yeah. But the vice president kept emphasizing that that problem was also actually as a result of lack of money mm. okay. to buy fuel. Mm. But under Professor Moss, Professor Moss actually uh, uh, managed to get us a, a trouble gas to okay. address the issue, the issue of gas. And so basically, we were confronted with generation deficit. Mm. And John Drahman Imama, under his leadership, okay. took the bull by the horn mm. to ensure that at least we increase our capacity to, as we speak now, we have excess capacity that we could at least even sell out to mm. our neighboring countries. Very well. But to come back to the issue of this pandemic, in fact, the vice president has actually tell us mm. the kind of mindset in government that they are actually looking at the pandemic at the level of doom so. And when you do such a comparison, then you will appreciate why they are taking this kind of uh, legit fair steps to, uh, in addressing it. Mm. During doom so, we did not get any foreign aid. The World Bank never put aside any money to be benefited mm. by this country. Mm. The IMF never put any money aside as an emergency uh, a loan to be uh, disbursed to countries that have a challenge with mm. their balance of uh, payment. 
if you have a very strong economy, mm. how come that you have a challenge with the balance of uh, mm. uh, payment? Now, you cannot benefit mm. from this IMF uh, 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 loan if you have a very strong economy where you don't have any challenge with balance of uh, uh, payment. So as a result, of Ghana claimed that we have a very effective economy, and yet we have run to uh, mm. uh, IMF. Now, and I, and I, Dr. Bamiya was straightforward mm -hmm. in, in, in his challenge. Mm -hmm. He talked about the fact that the robustness of an economy is truly determined in crisis. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the time you had crisis when you were in government. Mm -hmm. He talked about the Doomsaw era. He's talking about the uh, pandemic as we've been hit uh, with, we have no exception. But you see, the world. now what I'm saying uh, is that he has, he has actually thrown a challenge. And mm -hmm. he's telling you that, look, uh, tell us the measures you put in place to mitigate the plight of the good people of Ghana when you were hit with Domso, because he has told the good people of Ghana that in the midst of this pandemic, they have done a lot to mitigate the plight of you know, the good people you of see, Ghana. They've the, 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 the difficulty, all of that. The difficulty mm -hmm. with the NDC in government is that when we do what is expected mm. of us as government. We don't see the need to do, engage in jamboree. Mm. And that is why sometimes it's become difficult when you are be, uh, 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 discussing some of these things. In fact, in do, uh, in do, during the Doomso era, $45 million were, were made available, was made available to disburse to pharmaceutical companies. Mm. We have had NS chemists getting about $10 million. Tobinko was given, the, uh, Danex was given, etc. Mm. It was part of the support, stimulus okay. support that John Dramani Mama actually made available to these companies. Two, we have also subsidized electricity by 12%. Mm. And when subsidy is given, certainly government pays for it. But we did not see the need to engage in jamboree. We felt that this is actually a responsibility by government to cushion its own people. Mm. But the point I want to make is that, you see, the comparison is wrong. The basis of the comparison is wrong. But we'll grant him that because that is his comfort zone. He thinks that he can actually take advantage of that. But even in that situation, we have this pandemic where you have run to IMF. You've been able to get $1 billion mm. from IMF. You've taken $200 million from the World Bank, mm. $1.6 million from the USA. Okay. You've come home through the stabilization fund. You've mm. taken over $200 million. Can you step down for me in, in three minutes? Now, mm. you've gotten all this money. Mm. And if you read the paper that they've submitted to the IMF for this loan, they've indicated that they are going to use this money to support the weak and the vulnerable mm. households. Mm. Let me ask this question. But he that said that, mm. he said categorically mm. that in the time of doom, so you increase electricity fares. That is not you true. Increase that you increase electricity bills. You see, mm. the strength did you increase electricity We did not bills increase during the time of doom. We did so. not. We did not mm. increase electricity bills. Mm. And I'm saying that he would have helped us by providing the data because he kept saying that, check the data. But he, he did not mention a single data even to buttress his point. And now that, what is strange? And, and that don't so yes. teacher, uh, teacher training, uh, you know, teacher, teacher training and nurse training allowances were cancelled. Is that true or false? Teacher training allowances mm. was not, it was a policy under John Ajakum Kufu mm. where a memo was actually issued to take away that because mm. of uh, challenges with the wage bill. Now, when we came in, Getting to a certain point, we realize that there is a need for us to clear a certain backlog of mm. students who are sitting at home. Okay. And we have space at the teachers' uh, uh, colleges. We have space at the nursing mm. colleges. And it, we, felt, we realized that because of lack of resources, allowing such kind of uh, 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 situation mm. will make many of our children remain or stay at home mm. and so in the wisdom of the government government decided that okay let's take away mm. the the, uh, the 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 obstacle so that at least we will be able to admit so much and then we will refer the mm. students back to student loan okay we, in fact an alternative financing were, was provided but for the purposes of politics, mm. the MPP took advantage of it and created an impression as if the uh, NDC government wasn't actually sensitive. But mm. we did what 
certainly today as we speak now they have reversed back mm. to that situation they are not paying as often as they promised to do and i'm saying that the teachers training themselves mm. today if they sit and do a proper analysis of it they will realize that we have been genuine truthful to them mm. but let me conclude by saying that okay. you see it is certainly a mismatch mm. and that is why he refused to go and do the comparison with ebola okay because uh, my good brother sitting here if I may ask or I may find out from him, assuming his child uh, uh, comes from school mm. and said that oh, a teacher has given me a homework to do, and the homework, one of the questions is that in the midst of crisis, mm. Mm, these are the, the following crises occurred. And I, uh, the teacher is asking to take the odd one out. And then Ebola, uh, 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 COVID-19 mm. pandemic, and then Dumso is mentioned. Mm. Which one would he recommend? as an odd one out of it. Mm. So I am particularly saying that the man certainly just want us to engage in wild goose cheese. And I'm saying that the situation are quite different. They have taken so much money as we speak now. Those money are meant to be used to support the vulnerable and the weak. They are sitting on the money and they are allowing people to go around, I mean, uh, 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 on their own to right. be infected with this disease. Okay. And that is an issue that they have to look at and right. address. And I'm saying that he should provide us with the, the, the data. But okay. you see, strangely, I have a, a, a data here. When, I, I, when I'll come back to you. I think that you've done 20, you've done almost 20 minutes. Okay. So I'll come back to you. But can you wrap up on the data issue? Yes. Okay. He, he challenged that we should look at the data. Mm. And then he was talking about the, this government, I mean the MPP government, in terms of uh, uh, provision of infrastructure, I'll come, I'll come no to that. government. I'll, I'll come ever to that. I think the first that, that'll be that'll be our second right. round, you know, discussion before we wrap up. Well, viewers, you're still watching Hot News on Pan African Television with me, Justice Apia. Keep your messages coming in on zero two six zero eight four six five three nine zero two six zero eight four six five. We're also live on Facebook at Pan African Television. Also uh, on YouTube, we are live at Pan African Television. Take note, leave your messages over there. We'll make a time and read all those comments out for you. Now, Mr. Isi, let me come to you. Why compare, you know, Doomsaw and COVID-19? Uh, thank you, Justice. Uh, let me say good evening to uh, Honorable mm. uh, Senior Moba and uh, yourself Very well. and your mm. technical crew. Let me say good evening to our viewers. Mm. Uh, it's worth comparing. It's crisis. He's talking about crisis. Mm. In the midst of crisis, uh, doom so, uh, how was ventilators going to work in the hospital if the lights are off? Okay? And somebody comes and needs oxygen and is in dire straits as far as breathing is concerned. And you take such a person to the hospital, how are you going to save the person's life? Would you agree that prescriptions and mm. solutions for <laughs> doom so wouldn't be the same as COVID-19? Of Would course. You agree? Oh, definitely. So why definitely. compare the two? No. He's the, 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 His Excellency, mm. the Vice President, is saying that this country was confronted with such, you know, a crisis, homegrown crisis, okay. which took us for about four years mm. plus. You get it. And uh, His Excellency, the former president, didn't have a handle on it, okay? Mm. It, we were really challenged. And a lot of jobs went under, you get it? Mm. And so that is the basis on which His Excellency say, look, uh, the former president, you know, we tried as much as possible not to politicize this COVID-19 thing. The okay. president is the president, the commander-in-chief of the mm. Ghana Armed Forces. We are in a wartime. Okay, and in wartime, you know, you need the leader to prove the general to lead. Okay, so that is what the president is doing. And the NDC SARS thought it is time for us to also show our leader. Okay, you know, as if there's a parallel leadership. There's no parallel leadership. We have a president, a sitting president. There's a war. And we need to have a leader who is leading us to overcome this war. But I don't think that anybody has argued on that score. Right? No, course. no, yes. We know no, that no. we have a leader. And yes. leader is President Adam Kukufu. Yes. Where is this coming from? The president speaks the next day. <laughs> you see the former Facebook live with the Ghana flag behind him. He's a leader of the political party. <laughs> he 
<laughs> he's a leader of a political see, party. He has you, been a former president of this nation before. Is there anything, any law that prevents or bad no, the no, former president no, from having no, a Facebook life? No, but mm. the perception that is coming with it, right? Mm. It shows you set up a, a technical team, okay? Mm. That the COVID-19, what was the locus? What were they to do? Okay, but initially I welcomed it here. That if because the service for public education, I salute, I accept it, I welcome them. But it turned out to be something else. Okay, so the vice president is saying what he uh, said, that in crisis time, these two leaders, which of them will you trust to provide? The bottom line mm. is because of the social intervention and policies and programs that this government is rolling out mm. in these times. Mm. The Honorable uh, uh, Halidu has said something. That in those times, right, <laughs> uh, uh, doom up years, a lot of small industries were affected. A lot of them folded up. Some even left the shores of Ghana. There was no stimulus package to support them. Nothing. He was right. He said they provided, I knew maybe, you, he quoted 45, I thought it was $50 million. Mm. Okay, that the then government gave to the pharmaceutical okay. the state. That, that was the figure I know, that he was in government. So he may be right, right? I'm quote, getting it from the budget then. Yeah, the, I heard the finance minister mention $50 million. Mm. 45, 50 is, is, is the same. So the generality, the individuals who are affected, the doom so no light, you will not have light, there's heat everywhere, and yet at the end of the month, you're going to pay higher electricity bills. Fact, 2013, electricity then went up by 78%. Mm. 2014, 28%. 2016, before they exited, 59%. Mm. Facts, you get it. So you just check those things. You see, these days, because of the availability of the search engine, you can't just go and throw things out like that and go and sleep. Okay, he cited quoted the Energy Commission website. So uh, we can do that. So these are the facts that His Excellency, the former president, uh, is talking about. So mm. if you want to see which leader can stand on his feet in crisis time and manage crisis very well, mm. again, let's put it on record. Okay. But do you know that the expected revenue from the oil field, we are going to lose almost half of that, okay, the projected revenue. Because we projected at sixty-two dollars uh, uh, fifty cents per barrel. Okay. As we speak, it's around thirty thirty-one, right? Okay. Mm. Dollars. So almost half is gone. Mm. You get it. And so these are, and then there are other sectors that you know is being affected. We, we had a lockdown for three weeks. Okay. Lockdown three weeks in our major two major cities. Do you know the economic consequences of that? Okay. Mm. That is it. Nobody is working, and then the state had to cough up money to feed people 2.5 uh, 2 million packs of food were given out. Over 450,000 people were given raw food mm. in various quantities. Okay? If you put value on it, it's not small money. That was given out. Then the frontline workers. The insurance package of 350,000 each for the frontline health workers. I was privileged no, to no, be no. some of these. The data is backed by figures. Yes. And if we understand that, then if you quantify all the things you've mentioned, how much are we talking about as compared to what the NDC did under Doomsaw Crisis? If we should it compare, is. you know, it you is. talked about some, you know, uh, monies that were made available for people and, all. and, and you've talked about some 50 million dollars yeah, for that. yeah to mm. support the pharmacy yes. and that's all which well, other things we're giving to small scale uh, electricity i don't know about I mean, that i don't know about did. that you know, because website, you talk, yeah, uh, you increase by 78 percent and you subscribe by 12 percent i like can you allow him because that's this is his turn but what i'm basically what i'm saying is that yeah until we know, but, uh, from, uh, sorry, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, yeah. you know, kept mentioning data, yeah. data, data, data. He said he's going to make it available. But the question he is, the question is, he kept mentioning data without yeah. providing any figure. And he said How he's, 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 he's going to make it available. I'm providing figures. Yeah, I'm providing Just oppose it to yes. what the NDC did in yeah. their yeah. era. No. So we are able to tell we that live, you we, have done more than We live in it. And he said he will make all those data available. You know, the Vice President doesn't disappoint when it comes to data. Okay. 
Okay? And he said, you know, his right hand man, Gideon Boakon, you know, is also come up to say some things. All these data will be put in the public domain. There are some things that are verifiable, okay? okay. So that's the, on the COVID matter, the way the president has provided the, this leadership. And then one billion, okay, one billion cities is going to cushion electricity. Mm. You know that. Water, the figure, you know, will also be put out. There's 600 million Ghana cities for small, medium-scale businesses. And we all know, especially that uh, hospitality industry is, is hit hard. Hotels and this COVID actually affected the hotel industry seriously, okay? And the tourism industry and all that. So those people operating in that sector or that space are actually in dire straits. That is what the, 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 His Excellency the President said and said, look, because of this, let's give them this stimulus package, effective first me, okay? And so that is what you know, they are rolling out, and all of them can assess mm. the, those who fall within those categories. And that is what His Excellency the Vice President is talking about, the difference between the Nanado-led government and the so-called socialist-oriented NDC which doesn't roll out major social intervention in pro programs, okay? So these are the challenges. A central-right part, okay, or government is rolling out far-reaching, extensive social programs and policies in crisis time mm. as of now, okay? That is what we are talking about, okay? And the economy is robust and was able to support because mm. if the economy were not robust, we wouldn't be where we are, mm. okay? In the midst of this crisis of do uh, doom so, where did we go? We went to the IMF mm. for policy credibility. Okay? <laughs> we were downgraded. We were not an international crisis. You know, Ghanaians, a lot of us depend on products from China. You know that, the business people. Okay. Okay? China was under lockdown, right? Nobody was able to go there. Business had halted. A lot of people. Because that's where they go for their material products. Mm. That is the challenge, and you know how that is going to hit the economy as far as import revenues are concerned. Okay. And the business people are printing within those space. So that is what His Excellency, the Vice President, has said. And this government cares about the people. Of almost every household is benefiting from the electricity cut down. Those within the life life zone, right? Mm. Nobody is paying a dime. Okay? And those above the lifeline, 50%. And then you're using the March bill as your benchmark. What it means is that if you had a bill of 200 CDs in March, so if in April you get a bill of 200 CDs, you're going to pay half of that. If you get a bill of 240, you know, you're going to pay half, which is half of the 200, mm. which is 100, plus the 40. Okay, it means your consumption has gone up, excess. So these are things that have been calculated. An electricity company is helping the people. So. The vice president just responded to the former president, who has been, to be honest mm. with you, in the crisis time, been overly partisan. Mm. Overly, overly politicized the whole thing, partisan way. And, and I thought, you know, every time I felt uncomfortable. Because my information minister has said time without number. We don't want to politicize this whole COVID crisis. We want to come together as a people, mm. a nation, mm. to rally behind a leader and then, you know, overcome this uh, pandemic. Okay, so far, uh, it's been very daunting and challenging. Mm. Very daunting and challenging. I understand it's about 2.2% of, uh, you know, the capacity is As a government, and of course, of the test, as, as the, the vice test. president of the land, if you would want to compare these two situations, then why didn't you compare COVID-19 to Ebola? you know, how they were also able to manage the situation to an extent Who that we did not record what a single case. Bro, there was no Ebola in Ghana. Mm. There was no Ebola but, in Ghana. But what I'm saying is that... But, no, but, but, no. <laughs> Ghana, no. Ghana but, Medical Association but, said they asked the but, president but, to give intervention. He said he would do it. Wait a minute. Ghana wait a, Medical wait a, You are not arguing with me. You I'm asking you questions. <laughs> not, not a single Please, one. You are not arguing with me. I'm asking you questions. <laughs> what I'm saying is that probably... They had done some what, right, they something right they for that what reason. They did not record a case of Ebola in the country. How many I mean, and so, but we had Ebola in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Is that not right? Yeah. 
We had yes, Ebola in Liberia. Yes. We had we had Ebola in Liberia. We had and I'm saying that. No, but and that I'm saying that. That is why that. you do so, not do this. No, 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 please, uh, can you allow me, uh, no, Alaj, to no. of course uh, <laughs> ask my questions? What I'm saying, what I'm saying no, basically is question, that yes. it takes a it takes a government, a proactive a proactive government, <laughs> and one that is pragmatic in, enough yeah. to put in measures to make sure that a calamity. That has be, that had befell other countries mm. wouldn't actually befall us at the time. Mm. So what I'm basically saying is that couldn't we have compared the two? Because that would make more sense than comparing COVID-19 to a dumb There's song. nothing to compare mm. because there wasn't anything. Okay. He said we, we we even accepted to set up a, 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 a base in mm. Ghana to support. I know Nadmu went there to Sierra Leone to uh, Liberia to help mm. not move when Ghanaian okay. people went there, mm. you know, to support. I know. Okay? So these are things that, what I will rather, there was cholera. So and you him. think that it is There was chance. cholera. Let, it, let no, 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 wait a minute. You no, think I that... prefer the cholera okay. because uh, cholera was mm. in Ghana. Okay? <laughs> Over 240, uh, 45 or so people died. Okay. Okay? <laughs> cholera in Ghana. Mm. An age-old disease. We were not able to contain it under President Muhammad. Okay? And you think you would have been able to manage COVID in a way? You see, we are able to do what we are doing because of the, uh, you know, solid economy we had, which has been hit. We didn't do so. Look at what the desire took us through and policy credibility and all that. So if we want to talk about cholera, cholera occurred here. So COVID is here, how we are managing it. All right. If okay. Ebola had mm. been, you know, had come into Ghana, and it was managed. So far, there's no data or but record then probably, to show that, but, you know, but, but, this is, you see, the president, the one the, so Alaji, they yeah. should give us, right. you know, that we did A, B, C, D. That is how come we're able to, st and they didn't see that. No uh, port was closed mm. or, or border was shut mm. because of Ebola. Movement of people were not stopped. You get it. Mm. Everything normalized. All right. Was going no, we, are me. Come back to you. we are fortunate mm. nobody moved from those infected okay. zones into right. Ghana. Mm. You get it. That is it. Congo, DR, Liberia, Guinea, Sierra Leone. You know, these are places that I didn't hear that even Cote d'Ivoire had it. It was Nigeria that had about two or three cases and lost some one or so people, uh, person. Okay? Ebola. So these are the child the difference. So the vice president right. is talking okay. of crisis mm. and he's put this there. Right. Uh, Alaji has made his submissions and disagreed with some of them. I, th I agree with his excellence, okay. the vice president. Uh, mm. It is a perfect comparison to provide leadership in crisis time. And I think uh, uh, his excellency, the president, Anad Danko Kufuado, uh, par excellence. That's All right, thank you so much. That was Mr. George A. C. Data of Communications Not Born. So, uh, member of the New Patriotic Party Communications Team. You're still watching Hot News right here on Pan-African Television with me, Justice Apia, yours truly. Now, I'll come, I'll, I'll come to you, Alad. Uh, uh, you don't respond justice, to some of the things yeah, said by Mr. Isi, but briefly, it's, it's before, but briefly before, we should be candid. Oh, we should would be you sincere. allow me? No, me no, 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 wait, no I, I'm, I'm, I'll give you time to yeah. respond yeah. and to also answer my questions. But b briefly before you respond to him and answer these questions, uh, Dr. Baumia said that, uh, they inherited precarious situation from your government. I mean, at the time uh, they took they, they took over power. Uh, they had decline in agricultural growth, uh, freeze on public sector recruitment, and all of that. He talked about the fact that the microeconomic performance 2013-2016 since 2000. Vice President Malmia emphasized that the Akufuado administration had not only reversed this rot but had made giant strides in all sectors of the economy if indeed all these things were done by this government why would anybody say that of course uh, they've not performed and performed you see, better than the your government problem, the problem, where you've left all those the you know problem <laughs> of this country is actually the lack of proper scrutiny mm. so you you by, can respond by, to by, uh, Mr. by our journalists mm. these figures that he's bundling around okay the Finance minister submitted a paper to the IMF mm. for the one billion dollars that was granted to them. In that paper, they themselves acknowledge that they have huge challenges with their uh, the economy. Mm. They've talked about low growth. They talked about uh, 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 forex forex differential, the difficulty mm. in the stability of our city, etc. Okay. Now. 
Today, if uh, my brother here is saying that the economy is robust, and I'm saying that the condition to qualify you as a country mm. to benefit from that money is when you have a balance of payment crisis. Okay. The same people told us that they have three month import cover. Mm. Three month in import cover, only three weeks of lockdown, we ran uh, uh, to an IMF mm. cap in hand and begging that all is not well. Now, comparing it with Dumso, my, I want to ask him, how much came to support the solution or mm. the resolution of Dumso okay. from the uh, 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 international community? How much? John Dramani Mama showed leadership by using internal resources mm. to address the issue of Dumso. Okay. Anybody who followed the energy sector will tell you, to be able to get the, uh, a, a, term, a thermal plant mm. into this country, the least period will be three years okay. to that thermal plant to become operational. Mm. So if it has, it has taken him that period to increase the generation capacity of this country, as we speak now, mm. we have in excess. Even with excess capacity, they are, provide, uh, they are, they are presiding over a fluctuation electricity. Okay. And they want to tell us that they manage situation better than us. And I'm saying that he said he also challenged the issue of Ebola. Why? Ebola, you see John Johamani Mama playing Kiru. What are the movie play? Why? Mm. The current president mm. tweeted that he's urging the good people of this country. Okay. Should any case enter into this country, John Mama mm. should be held responsible. Very well. That was a statement he made. And at that point in time, the reason why we did not record any case in this country was because of pragmatism of the government. Okay. We put steps, we put committees, we put surveillance at the borders. Okay. You will not enter without scrutiny. Okay. And I'm saying that if it comes to real leadership, why? Today, is that the kind of leadership we are experiencing? The armchair leadership? Where we cannot see our own president speaking to us. Mm. Journalists asking him basic questions for him to respond. Okay. He goes, and then in fact, he even give us time, 8 o'clock, and then they'll push it to 8.30, they'll push it to 9.30. Inconsistency. But those things, is that the kind of leadership? Happen, no, I mean, no, those no. Are happening. You see, I mean, that you, can, you can understand. They have explanations. You can understand if it is a live broadcast. Okay. But not a recorded mm. version that you only come and slot a tape and you keep telling people here and there. My point is that... Mm. It is a complete mismatch. You cannot compare Dumso with COVID-19. Okay. That is insensitive. It is sheer wickedness. Mm. And it tells you the kind of mindset that they are handling this case. Why? Are you, are you, are you surprised that we are registering huge numbers? Mm. As we speak now, areas, communities within my, my, my constituency, mm. just yesterday, I was standing watching when the team came. They were coming to take entire family, one, a family, that they have tested them and they, they are positive. Mm. And they are coming to actually get them out of their homes. The sympathy, the, the trauma. And you are comparing this with doom. So it tells you the mentality that they are using to handle this one. This sickness is causing life. You have huge amount of money to use to resolve these challenges. You have locked us down use it as a, uh, as, a, as a collateral to go for a loan, and that loan is meant to support the weak, only for you to get the money and say, hey, Mumpi, all of you go out. If you go and you are infected, go and die. We don't care. And you are telling me this is an management issues that you can compare with John Jahamani Mama. Now, strangely, the man has some kind of boldness mm. to even tell us that when it comes to infrastructure, Zero. Touch on that. We cannot, mm. I mean, no government mm. and the Fourth Republic can be compared with this government. What data do you have? What? To counter what. Uh, is this man, you said. see, yesterday I used certain words and. Uh, I don't so, think such so, so many of the MDP people platform, were actually it's angry it's and it's mad it's at me. Mm. Let me tell you this. There is a video mm. of his interview. Mm. He had after uh, uh, Sir Pepper read a budget. Yeah. And in that video, he accused John Dramani Mama's government mm. in terms of reducing the capital uh, uh, expenditure. Eh? 
reducing mm. it from 9% to 4.5%. Uh, uh, okay. And that, why is it that if the NDC is priding himself of providing infrastructure, mm. why is it that in terms of investment, the, the percentage has reduced? These are the figures here. Okay. And for me, when Baumia is talking, look at the data. Look at the data. We'll give him the data. Okay, so come the capital with the expenditure data. Mm. as per percentage of uh, uh, G G GDP mm. year by year. 2013, that was under John Dramani Mama. Okay. It was 3.9 percent. Okay. Mm. 2014, it was 3.9 percent. 2015, it was 4 percent. Mm. 2016, 4.6 percent. Mm. Now, Listen to, 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 to their investment okay. that he claimed that in history, under the Fourth Republic, mm. no government can be compared with uh, 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 Nanadu, the yeah. Nanadu's mm. government. In 2016, ca capital ex expenditure was 4.6. Now, 2017, it was 3.1. 2018, it was 1.6. And then 2019, 1.5. Mm. Now, in 2020, you are make, uh, doing a capital expenditure of 1.5, and somebody who ended with 4.6, you are saying that you've done better than him. This is the data. This is the data that we are expecting for him to look at. Mm. He did not provide, but this is actually the data available. He has provided the data. In fact, I mean, he, 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 he has challenged... The previous go, go go back, you see, there is a video. Have you done sector by sector that uh, you think that today, done today more as what they are doing today in government? Speak. The reality mm. is that What's the if reality? you decide to mm. take away the investment made within the health sector under John Dramani Mama, mm. Ghana would have been naked. Okay, naked, naked in terms of mm. uh, 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 fight against coronavirus. Ghana would have been naked. Okay. So you are, you, you are touching all the infrastructure sector. being used today within the health sector. Our investment mm. within the health sector, okay. investment made by John Dramani Mama. Okay. Investment that they bastardized. In fact, this is their manifesto. Okay. They, because of the extent of uh, uh, investment mm. in infrastructure, mm. they decided to actually do this. And that massive corruption, the hallmark of infrastructure development under Mahama. Mm. What did they sort to do? They actually put this one down, created an impression in the minds of the Ghanaian people that, oh, your mama is only embarking on infrastructure because mm. there's some benefit that the government is getting from it. Okay. As we speak now, three and a half years, not even an ant is in Mr. Wam. All right. If really, can, when can, they have can, said in this manifesto, uh, then that we should be moment. getting, they said mm. massive, mm. massive, the word mm. is massive, massive. corruption. Mm. Then we should be getting about half of the leadership of John Dramani Mama uh, uh, government being in Sawam. Mm. So these these guys, eh? Yesterday when I look at uh, 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 Baumia, what came to mind was simply this: this is a courageous, courageous and mm. bold criminal. Okay. In quote, mm. that he will enter into your home as you are sitting there as a landlord. Mm. Enter into your room, mm. take all your belongings, mm. come out whilst you are asking me, who are you? And he's telling you, this belong, this belong, this belong, this items belong to me. That is the kind of, the, that kind of uh, boldness mm. that Baumia demonstrated yesterday. Okay. But clearly, the, the, the data doesn't support what he's talking about. Okay. Today, as we speak now, what is the, the, the that document they presented to IMF, mm. they have acknowledged that this country, in terms of debt, we are yeah. in distress. Mm. From 122 you have inherited, now we are hitting 235. And you are telling me that you are doing better than us? I mean, sometimes, let's be real. And conveniently, he decided to use Dumso to make comparison. And I'm saying that he should tell me how much money came from the international community right. to support the okay. resolution of mm. the Dumso crisis. All right. We use internal generated uh, 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 resources and we resolve it and actually bequeath to you an excess uh, uh, generation capacity. Mm. Even that, the Ghanaian people are struggling. If we do not have enough generation capacity, you will not have the gut to say you are even giving free electricity. Very well. All right, thank you so much for your submission. Now, Mr. C, let me come to you. We'll touch on the infrastructure. You tell us, because uh, Dr. Bamiya 
kept mentioning once again data, data. It means that the government has a data to prove that sector by sector you have done better than the previous government infrastructure wise. But before we we delve into that particular you know one, under Dunso and 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 of course under your watch. Uh, with COVID-19, we've seen funds established. Ghanaians, of course, contributing to the fund. We've seen, you know, monies, uh, you know, that we've taken from IMF and all of that just to support, I mean, the situation and support the good people of Ghana. Under COVID-19, uh, sorry, under Domso crisis, we did not see anything of that sort. Once again, if you compare these two situations, are you not being wrong by comparing because one, we have situations where even ordinary individual Ghanaians, institutions, companies, corporate organizations are, of course, you know, supporting, contributing to support, I mean, uh, the fight against the issue. And then also we've seen some money taken from IMF and all of that just to support and make sure that we fight the pandemic as compared to Domso, that nobody contributed a dime. It was solely what government had to offer at the time to make sure that we end that particular crisis. Are we comparing rightly? Yes, we are comparing <laughs> very rightly. Mm. Uh, one, uh, Alaji says something. As of the time they took over, Ghana had the generation capacity mm. uh, of our energy stock mm. was high, 2,845 megawatts. Mm. Then at the time the peak time uh, what we needed what we needed uh, was mm. about oh, 2000 yeah. megawatts Very right, right. Mm. as of the I time i think that our time is allow him to flow our time is limited allow him to flow go ahead. as of mm. the time peak time this thing we need was about 2000 now we are talking 2300 yeah. to 2700 mm. at peak period right if that's what we need now so now over 5000 Yes, over 5,000, yeah. which you went into that uh, hoodious agreement and of it's costing the nation over 500 million. Nobody knows. <laughs> ah, things you take to parliament, what is the ceiling? Ah, you make prognosis. No, yes, that is why you are there. It. That, no, that is why you are there. Executive. Ah, why do we vote for you to go to parliament? <laughs> All right, uh, go ahead. Can no, go ahead? So, uh, and, and these matters, mm. and again, he quoted something, budget prognosis. Uh, he gave uh, Kipex fine one point something one point. What was the actual? What, what was the actual? Because these are budget proposals that we are giving. Okay, when you put the figures, these are budget projections. No, so what are the actual? What are the actual? I'm okay. saying that the yes, yes, yes but was it actually no? Sometimes you put that you don't spend no, but if it. You don't spend. You right. don't invest okay. that. Okay, so okay. Let, let's let's then, let's, then, let's then, move then, from that. No, delve into, as in the know, infrastructure, mm, the data will be coming out. Mm. Uh, but health savvy, health sector. Okay, so right? sector by about, sector, yes, health sector, education sector, road sector. What have you done? What have you done? Over 665. Mm. I have it here. Mm. I can forward it to you. Okay. Uh, 665. Health, yes, health infrastructure mm. initiated, ongoing, and some completed mm. by this government. Where? By this government. Where? Across the whole nation. Okay. Across. <laughs> if yeah, it includes uh, clinics, mm. polyclinics, mm. uh, tips compounds, mm. and bungalows for nurses, doctors. Don't go and uh, uh, painting our chip compounds. No, 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 no. How do many that. chip then compounds the are in one. the often so <laughs> the, 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 How many hospitals, how many clinics are in the office? 665. All health infrastructure. All health infrastructure. Where are they located? Oh. I'm telling you, they are okay, across the nation. Across the nation. Region by region. Give me regional, give me regional you know, you know, statistics time, on that. Mm. Once you have time, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I have it here. No, regional That's statistics. Data coverage, we have this. Ashanti, this, we have this. What I have here is here. No, but this time, how many hospitals? How many hospitals are you constructing? Don't worry. It's here. So let's let's go. Are uh, these ones part of what the president Nana Dankwa Kufuadu has promised to do? No, 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 no. The 88 mm. is different. Okay. The 88 for districts that don't have it. You see? Okay, ask that now. How many hospitals that are in operation that you have constructed? They are different from uh, in fighting COVID 19. We inherited. Mm. That's different. That's they are different from, from inherited yes, ones and all of that. Okay. Yes, mm. I've started. I'm going some completed. Mm. Take then the data, and I'm then telling you, I will challenge about close to there. Our time is almost up, so allow him to flow. Can you go ahead? 
Mm. <laughs> Thank, you, boy. <laughs> Thank you very much. You see, when you go into the education mm. sector, mm. the infrastructure that are rolling out, mm. eh? massive. Mm. Eh? Go to the schools. Which go schools? To the $1.5 billion debt fund mortgage that we use to get school infrastructure. Okay. Serious. It's ongoing. Mm. Road infrastructure is ongoing. Where? Okay. How many kilometers of road are you constructing? Uh, uh, plenty, plenty. Mm. Hey. You know, we'll give you all this mm. as time goes on. Okay. But, but the vice president said that while we'll we'll you're coming out with some of these things, yes. that you make no, no, data he made, he made it yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, the data is available, so mm. we'll put it out. That's okay. why we got this compilation, because the uh, former president was happening you, you know the happening. health sector. You get it? Mm. So these are matters that we're putting out. This data will be put in the public domain. And you see, Araji, I don't did something which was I was laughing. You, mm -hmm. you remember, we His Excellency the Vice President is talking about the first term of every government. Mm. He's talking the second term. Mm. No, so first term. Is, but Mama did first term. Oh, Mama did one term. It yeah. is six months. Mama, Mama's first term. The NDC term. Because the Vice President Mama he was said. part of that. Mm. Okay? You see, you can't let appropriate and report. So are you okay. now running away from a Mama's first term. That is the data I gave you. That is 2013 to 2016. I did the first term. Mama did one term. Mama. Yeah, this mm. is them, right? Mm. But Mahama did one thing. Mahama did so one thing. So the professor must did virtually nothing for mm. you. Nobody you has it. said that. That's how the arguments here. Nobody has said that. Okay, so, I'll tell you that. Daniels, the vice president, that's why I love him. Okay. He says intellectual debate. Oh, this one intellectual. He puts it down. I, I let's engage you intellectually. I have to and then let's go. Instead of throwing... So, so if your son comes home with a homework... And the next one, the former president... Deliberately lies to Ghanaians. Mm. Can you trust that him, man? He went and what picked he our record for 2018 mm. and <laughs> allocated it to on what? On press freedom. Okay. You remember that? Mm. He okay. said the first, eh, the best, and the 23rd. That record is 2018. Okay. I don't know whether President Mahama was the president right. of Ghana in 2018. Uh, but this see, is the man is where the who wants to come back to, see, what, uh, to uh, lie to us. That's it. That's uh, where the man is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm coming. Good evening. I'm sure you've listened to Kojo Pong Kuruma. When we were talking about the corruption perception in the index, I'm sure you listened to his logic. I listened to him. Go by that logic, and you understand why. Uh, 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 point from me. Thank you. About you. No. You. No. You people allow me to read some messages. I beg you. The the corruption uh, perception <laughs> index. The logic of Kojo Upo Kuruma. You sit to oh, actually oh, analyze. All right. Your your mama mama thank you all so much for coming. I'm so grateful. Now, I, I, oh, let me say, see, let me say, see, please let me read my messages. Can I? Don't give you the information. We never made it a genocide. Can I? Can I? No, no. I have given you enough time to make your point. Let me also read some of the messages. Now, now it's okay. Oh, Mr. C, please. Ah, but who is state orchestra? Ahmed, Ahmed Swale is, is actually. But you see, you see, we have Alaji. Alaji. I'm sorry, Alaji. The man moves so much. The man moves so much. Alaji. See, I see. I have respected the two of you. You see, I have respected the two of you. Let's restore sanity wow. on the program so I can really also read out my messages. I mean, we are not doing viewers any good. Then we should know. No, no listen. The other time, now, 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 Alaji, wow. Alaji, the other time, a noble man, listen, a noble man was listening to us. He met me and then he told me that, look, control your panel. Tell them we are listening to them. They need to speak to us. Please, the noise is. Let's restore sanity. I'm sorry. Now, uh, I understand. I understand. But sometimes, when we have to engage our viewers to, I mean, um, uh, let me let me take some. Of, Adam, kindly give me some few minutes to read some of the messages. I beg you. Uh, this one says, uh, Jay, God brought Corona so that He will expose the super incompetence of Nana-led administration by Big Harun in Wa. Thank you so much, Big Harun, for uh, your message. Justice. Ask the MPP man this question for me. Was COVID-19 started in Ghana? I'm asking this question because the cholera he is talking about started in Ghana and elsewhere. Ahmed sent in that message. OPK in Gosso says, Dr. Bamiya spoke and exposed super incompetent Bahama and NDC's falsehood on the economy and press freedom rankings and is giving them nightmare after spoiling uh, Ghana cities for eight years. How much Ghana cities for eight years? We are create loot and share. So we should let 
the clueless Mahama and NDC stay in opposition forever. Regards to Honorable Martin Ajay uh, Mensa Kosa, incoming MP uh, for Techiman South and Nanakweku Menu Gosu Sanahini. Thank you so much for your message. Good evening, Jay. Please tell Mr. AC to mention to us where they have made massive infrastructure so we, the people of Ghana can testify. MPP should be honest to us a little. Evans from Insawam sent in that one. Uh, hi, Justice. Good evening. We are sick and tired of this incompetent vice president ever in the history of Ghana. The senior minister override his duties, thus making him clueless in governance. He should meet Honorable uh, Isaac Adongo for the debate and stop propagating lies and political gimmicks. Regards to Alaji Bifseni from Usman in Tamale. Usman, thank you so much. This one says, is that MPP communicator? Uh, well, what is Mr. AC talking about? Fred from Hohwe sent in that one. Fred, thank you so much. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. AC. Enough uh, of your noise. We don't think... Uh, don't think we shall forgive you this time uh, round. Get okay. He said, "Get serious." Ask government. Uh, MPP has done nothing for this country. Uh, this one says, "Good evening to you uh, and your partner. Honestly, I've never seen a bunch of lies in my life than this current government. Anytime they speak, my blood runs cold." Uh, Ruthman from Sunyani sent in that one. Uh, finally, let me take this one. Good evening, uh, Justice. Is it now abundantly clear that uh, 1 million plus, plus votes MPP claimed to have won the 2016 elections with which was actually for NDC, was actually for NDC. Okay, Japan recently confirmed that and warned that if they allow the current register to be used, the NDC assumed uh, the NDC is assumed of 1.5 million votes. So you see they why they're fighting they so hard uh, for new register. <laughs> I cannot read your messages anymore. And then thank you so much for uh, giving me the extra time to be able to wrap up properly. Thank you so much, my producer, uh, Latifa Adam. Latifa, thank you so much for always being there. Sewa and everybody, Ruben or so, uh, my cameraman in the studio, thank you so much for, of course, uh, being there to make the show a success. I'm so grateful. Make a time with us, same time tomorrow. My name is yours truly, Justice. Appear on the show, has been hot news. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>